Hello, welcome to Park Life on the Road. It's second v third as Exeter City travel to Cheltenham. Coming up on today's show, we speak to manager Matt Taylor. We also speak to Josh Key and we look back at some classic encounters with Cheltenham. But first, let's look back at Tuesday night as Exeter City made it 13 goals in a week at Grimsby. We're up against a very confident Exeter. They were looking for a free kick, but the referee playing the advantage. And the first major chance of the game for Matt. Started really well, Exeter right on the front foot. Five back in once again. They're looking for a flag. It's not going to come, but the opening goal will from Ryan Bowman. For the side starting fifth this midweek in the league. They're off and running at Blundell Park tonight. One up here. And uh, looking for more goals now. This is Jay Taylor. That's a good save from McKeown. Season. Amazing run this. Is it to be an end product for Grimsby here? Yes! For Luke Hendry coming in. in. The last league game scored six against Colchester. Could be in for more here. Oh, yes, they are. That's a terrific finish from Randall Williams. Onto it like a flash. And right in the corner. Well, just before halftime would be a real blow to Grimsby. Is it towards Williams? Oh, it will squeeze in. And he's got another one. It's a real dagger to the heart of Grimsby. So close to half time. It's Scannell. So we get Sparks. Scannell brilliantly done from him. Scannell goes on. Fancies it. Big deflection on that. I needed the interventions of McKeown. And the flag staying down here. It's Randall. Oh, and it will work out for Matt J. And that's for a good period of goal scoring form with his fifth goal in his last five appearances now. Fortunate how he came about, but still needed to finish it off. And hoping for a, a free kick here, Jay. And he will stay in play as Exeter getting on with it. Cross it goes. And Ryan Bowman should have made more of that, that, really. And another clear message sent out by Exeter with a third straight win in all competitions. Back-to-back -back league wins after defeat to Oldham. Ten goals scored. It's a real shame you can't be with us at Cheltenham on Saturday, but the end is in sight. Fans will be back in the park on Tuesday when we take on Northampton in the Papa John's Trophy. Please keep an eye out across the club's website and social media for any updates, and we will be doing some little videos for you to make your visit back to the park a safe and enjoyable one. Saturday sees the return of up to 2,000 fans to Cheltenham's Johnny Rock Stadium. We spoke to manager Matt Taylor before the game. Here he is giving his thoughts on the game itself and the return of the supporters. Strengthen again, and that, that's the reason that they're near the top and will be challenging this season. Um, we, we fully understand what a good team Cheltenham are, um, and we can talk all day long about the individuals they've got at their disposal. But um, we've got to concentrate on ourselves. Um, hopefully, we'll go down in good spirits on the back of a few good victories and, and confidence boosting in terms of the scoreline in those those victories as well. Um, and, and we'll give it a good game, give it a good go. Um, be great to play in front of some sort of audience, so to speak, and see some supporters inside the stadiums. And um, but hopefully, it's a, it's a good game football. And it's been a, a long week, hasn't it? A lot of travelling. I guess it's nice to have an away game that, in, in relative terms, is just up the road. Yeah, to, to a certain extent, look, um, you know, a lot, long old way from Exit to Kent and then obviously Grimsby in the week. Um, and it will actually be quite an early start on, on Saturday because we'll have to get up for pretty much at Cheltenham or, or near Cheltenham. Um, so they're long days and it's a, a culmination and a, a continuation of these long days, which will at some stage take its toll on this group. Um, Hopefully the, the motivation is there in terms of a second versus third clash towards the top end of the table. So I, I never really have to motivate, motivate this group of players. Um, but we've got to be mindful of what they've done previously. Um, and at some stage, um, it will start taking its toll. Hopefully it's not this weekend. And if we can preempt it, then we'll make, we'll make changes. You said that it is, I mean, just Exeter's location means everywhere is a fairly long way. But our waveform's been fairly good. That's 10 unbeaten on the road now. Yeah, we've been strong away from home. Um, we want to keep on picking up as many points as we can. 
um, it, it makes it a, a two-day affair when we go away, you know, yourself with, with the press. It's it's long old days, a lot of travelling. Um, for some reason, when you're sat on a coach or sat in a car or sat down in a long period, you feel knackered afterwards. <laughs> Not quite sure why. It's, it's, it's yeah, ironic, uh, really. Um, but that's part and parcel of being an Exeter City member staff or Exeter City player. Um, this group is certainly used to it and we can never use it as a, an excuse. Um, and we've got some, some home games to come um, and Cheltenham being one of our more local opposition or opponents means it's not too bad on Saturday. Um, like I say, we can talk at length about the distance we've travelled in, in the last week or so. Um, we're looking forward to this weekend. Um, good game of football, two good teams, two teams in form, two teams who try and play the right way. Um, and um, you, you say it time and time again, but you want the game to live up to expectation. Sometimes they don't. I remember the nil-nil draw last season where both teams kind of cancelled each other out. Sometimes it turns into a, a Cajun affair where a team doesn't want to lose or both teams don't want to give anything away. Um, there's still a long way to go in this season as yet. So I think both teams will be trying to win a game on Saturday. One man who has gone from strength to strength this season is Josh Key. We spoke to him ahead of the game to get his thoughts. The season, we maybe weren't taking our chances as much, but I think... Now we're taking our chances. We're starting to, to, to see how well we're playing. And I think uh, if we keep building off it and keep, keep the same habits and how we train things, then, um, yeah, I think, I think we'll be a good team to watch when all the fans come back. I need to ask you a question that I've been asking everyone this week. Uh, since you got the assist for it, our third goal on Tuesday night, who are you giving it to? Honestly, I, still, I, think, I think if I give it to MJ... It's, and Rand's maybe touched it, then it's not my assist, so I'm going to give it to Randale, I think. <laughs> we like that one. We like that one. Look, so Cheltenham, it's a game that, you know, would you would you put it down as our toughest game of the season? Because it's second be third and they're flying as well. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the thing, thing with League Two is that some teams on the day are, are better than you would think they are on paper. But I think, yeah, in terms of on paper, and we know how Cheltenham play, I think, yeah. It will be probably one of our, t- our toughest sort of tests this this season so far, um, but it's one that we're all really ready and excited for. So that's the main thing. And we've got that added. I think for the hope for Cheltenham, even we've got that added incentive for them of fans returning. I think they're going to have about fifteen hundred, two thousand. I mean, it's so good to have fans back, isn't it, in stadiums? Yeah, I think. I know there's there's lots of debates about oh, is it is it unfair on people in tier three can't have fans, but I think the general footballing uh, quota is that people just want fans back in, whether you can have your own or it's just theirs. I think football's not as as fun without fans. Um, so yeah, we're all really excited for that. And even though they're going to have the edge in terms of the the away um, away fan, uh, well home fans for them, away fans for us, I think. We're just excited to have them. And whether they give us a bit or not, ugh, happy days. I guess it's a, a unique one for you, isn't it? Because you've been part of this team since obviously the start of the season, but you've never actually played in front of a crowd at, at SJP. I mean, I think the Big Bank are going to love you when they see you. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. But no, I'm joking. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's being, being at Tiverton, we had few fans, but not loads. So, um, I'm really excited when, when the fans can come back, I think, in Northampton next week. So, yeah, I can't wait. And I think all the other lads are in the same boat. They can't wait. And um, hopefully we'll be able to, yeah, put on some some good performances for them. And, yeah, maybe I might start scoring when, um, when they come back. Who knows? It's now time to look back into the history books as Will Barrett reflects on times gone by. Here he is with the lowdown on our past contests with Cheltenham. City head to Cheltenham this afternoon in excellent form, having given us Grecians plenty to cheer about in recent weeks. Things haven't been too bad for fans of the Robins either. Cheltenham are currently unbeaten in their last eight games at home in all competitions and have only lost on two occasions at the Johnny Rock Stadium so far this season. Now, historically, games versus Cheltenham feel like a pretty regular occurrence, so it might be a surprise to some fans to learn that this will be only the 21st time that we've met in any senior club competition. Our first matchup didn't arrive until Boxing Day in 1999 when John Gitton scored our only goal in a 3-1 defeat. And since then, the head-to-head record in the league stands at a total of seven wins for City, three draws and nine wins for Cheltenham. Remarkably, all nine of our defeats came in the first nine matches we played. But since then, we have dramatically turned things around to go unbeaten 
in an 11 game stretch that goes back to 2014. Hopefully the Grecians who do over the Robins continues and we can turn things around on our opponents once again and jump above them in the Skybet League 2 table. As Will mentioned there in August 2017, City were 4-3 winners at Cheltenham. It's time to look back on that game on a hot Gloucestershire summer afternoon with goals from Jake Taylor, Jordan Moore-Taylor and two from Ruben Reid. The Grecians scored a whopping 20 goals in November and boy aren't you in for a treat because here are all 20 of them. Thing to show for it so far. And ball launched forwards and it's allowed to bounce and that's a big mistake. Will they pay the price? They will. Joel Randall puts Exeter ahead. His fifth goal of the season and it was entirely it's avoidable. Patient here. Nicky Law. Still look, he pulls it back to the edge of the area, it breaks for Taylor! And Exeter have their equaliser. Once again, Jack Sparks is advanced in towards uh, Matt Jay, and Jay's going to have a go, he's going to squeeze in the equalising goal. Here comes the corner kick. Hasn't yet been dealt with, uh, nodded back towards Hartridge to apply the finishing touch. It's a second goal in the space of seven minutes for Exeter City. Flick up across comes O'Connor and he's given the ball away. And there is an equaliser. And it's Matt Jay. He's continued his run here. Archie Collins pulls it back and Bowman makes it 2 1. From behind, they now lead. The selection giving opportunity for some to impress this evening as the fixtures continue to come thick and fast and they challenge for promotion out of League Two. It's Kite, found by a Josie, and it's a wonderful finish now for Seymour to chase. Caleb Taylor under real pressure. It's a loose touch by Taylor. It's Seymour in, 2-0 Exeter. Of West Brom's academy side so far this evening. Sparks now into the 18-yard box, still going. It's all the way. It's a wonderful individual goal by Jack Sparks. The defending to be frank and honest, woeful again. So there'll be three from three in this competition as well. Law in towards the near post. It's Wilson twisting, weaving, still going. Lewis Wilson cut back, Nicky Law. That's a fourth from... A few targets for him to aim at, and it goes. Jay, what a save by Waller! But Williams is there. Inside, Bowman in the thick of it. This is Randall. Good ball in, and an excellent finish. An improvised finish, and Matty J makes it 1-0. 
Exeter are looking dangerous every time they come forward. They've got men over here. This is Jay who squares it. And it's the simplest of tap ins for Joel Randall. And it goes from Collins. Right at left hand side. Great yeah. ball there. And it's swept home. And Ryan Bowman gets his goal. Play to Sparks. to get the ball into the danger zone they can and Ryan Bowman makes it 4-0 straight on to the head of Randall comes a shot and it's been tipped onto the bar and helped home by Ryan Bowman trying to put some more gloss on the finish off the post and in Dempsey back with Keane, they've managed to get it back, the Grecians. Collins, patient passing, Bowman he has just come back on, slips it round the corner back for Lord to hit it, oh, and they've equalised. Bowing forward, has options, almost too, too many, he can't make his mind up. Randall, oh. Randall scores! <laughs> Nicky Law gets an assist to go with his goal. Which is Williams, he sets it in behind for Collins. Collins with a lovely back heel for Law, Law's pull back for Randall. It could be Randall again, gets past one oh, and scores! Goal. He's done it again, Joel Randall. 3-1 Exeter City, and it's two goals in five. Well, we've somehow narrowed it down to just eight for November's Goal of the Month competition. I won't tell you who to vote for, but my personal favourite is Jack Sparks against West Brom. Voting is open now. Head over to the website. Earlier, you heard his thoughts on the game, but what about the rest of the squad? Here is Josh Key's teammates. Who's got the best banter? It's, it's either got to be um, oh, it's a hard one. Nicky Law Sweens. Nicky, I like his sense of humour. It's, it's quite, I don't know if it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's, it's quite dry and it makes me laugh. Whereas Sweens is quick. Um, so it's, it's got to be one of them too. On the flip side, who's got the worst banter? <laughs> um, I mean, probably a, uh, oh, I don't know actually. Tom Parks, maybe, or a Johnny Maxted. <laughs> I don't know. Who is the loudest? Oh, the loudest. I'm really bad at this. Um, I mean, for some reason, the only person that's coming to me is Lee Martin, but he was there last year. Um, it's, okay, I'd, I'd probably say it's got to be a, oh, I can't think, a Johnny or a Sweens. They're quite loud on the bus um, after a win. Yoko was loud. He was very loud. Oh, we, he, heard, that, we heard that one all right from the, from the stands. Yeah. Um, okay, on the flip side, who's the quietest? Uh, loves themselves. Yeah, probably, uh, probably a, a, a Jose. He's, he, he's, no, he speaks a lot, but he doesn't. I've never seen him be too loud, but I quite like it. He, he's, he's good to talk to. Who is the strongest one? Who lifts the most in the gym? Well, I don't know. It's probably, well, Hartridge. Alex Hartridge, strong, strong lad. He, uh, yeah, he's, he's decent in the gym. I mean, this sort of ties into to the best banter one, but who's the one that's always playing tricks on the, on the, on the others? Uh, Ryan Bowman. Do you know, the amount of times he's blimmin'... When I was a first first or second year pro, he'd be like, oh, yeah, Matty wants you. And you'd be like, oh, right, okay, I've got to, like, Matty wants me. I've got to go into his office. And um, you knock on his door. He's like, what, 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 what are you in here for? And it's just embarrassing. <laughs> right. Or like after get four games, he sticks stickers on your back. He pretends he's being nice to you, putting his hands on your shoulder, and he sticks something on your back. And everyone's, yeah, you're laughing. Stop. <laughs> Who's got the worst dress sense? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I don't like to judge people, but I think all the lads say Ryan. Um, they they can explain to you why, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna go with what they say because yeah, that's that. This one might be a bit harder. Everyone says that you've got the best voice in the squad, singing voice. Oh, yeah. I'll take that. You can't say yourself, so who's the best singer? Um. Parksy's got a bit, I think. Tom Parks. I uh, I was there and he did his um initiation and yeah, he's he's pretty decent actually. What did he go for? Uh I can't remember now. Um 
Yeah, I can't remember. It was it was when we were in Jersey. He was on the table doing it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was. He was alright to be fair. What, Dude, did you, what did you go for when you did yours? Um, I've done it every year because they make me. But um, the I think I did um, Stand by Me, just the standard one, isn't it? Yeah. So who is your roommate on away trips? Kite, Harry Kite. He, uh, yeah, I've been with him for for a few years. So yeah, Kite. And so this last one then, whether it's on the team bus or when you've got chill out time, who's always asleep? Oh, I mean, there's a there's a few. I'm up there. Um, Nigel's up there. Uh, Rory is up there. Um, I'd say actually Hartridge, Alex Hartridge, he's, he's a good sleeper. Yeah, he'd probably be at the top. This is the substitute, Alex Fisher. Oh, my. And they pickpocketed them here. It's Joel Randall. Yeah. Comes out here for a fine effort and a fine goal from Harry Kite. Fisher off the ball from the visitors. Now there's another chance here to find the equaliser, and this time it is tucked in by Matt Jay. First team were of course in action on Tuesday night, but it was the youngsters' time in the spotlight on Wednesday here at the park as they took on AFC Bournemouth in the FA Youth Cup. They recorded a stunning 3-1 victory against the Cherry side who had previously been unbeaten in 2020. Here are the best bits. A good good start. Both sides. It's a great delivery. That's a great delivery. Great delivery. Great from delivery. Veal, Sonny Cross getting across Sonny the front Cox post. Comes up trumps again, he gets across his man, he gets a touch, and goalkeeper doesn't stand much of a chance when the delivery is that good. Sonny Cox again. Finding the back of the net in these FA Youth Cup fixtures and puts Exeter City 1 0 up just six minutes in. Ball played wide into Dawes, who's 1v1 against Ellis Johnson, drives inside, plays a lovely That's reverse a ball, ball to Pollock, who gets there. And what a finish! What a finish! That just goes to show that his movement as a centre forward, that's why he's got so many goals this season. Completely cut the press apart there. Really brave to play out, and the firm passes out into that midfield area. They look to build through the middle of the pitch now. Burgess hits the diagonal pass to, towards Birchall, providing that width down the right-hand side, and manages to keep the ball in, crosses it into the box. Great connection from Pollock and a great save. Michael Lilly looking to press height. He's really putting him under a lot of pressure. Sonny Cox helps him out and secures the ball inside the box. Invites Nelson forward, looking to deliver early, goes in low. Well, couldn't quite be cleared away, but there's that instinct again. Just to pull the trigger, be an option. It's a long throw in towards the box. It's dropped down to Jack Veal. He strokes it nicely. Takes a deflection over the crossbar. I think if they hadn't have taken a deflection, could have does caught. really well there to to tidy that pass and play into the midfield. But extra pinched it. And there's a chance for X City to counter attack. Frank Love is in on goal here. He's one on one with his first touch. Takes him a little bit wide, and then Sonny turns inside. He's still on it. He's still on it. Jack Veal with the header and it's off the line. But the oh, referee what, assistant has flagged. And have Jack Veal has scored. He might have a goal. Sonny Cox shot, loops up off the goalkeeper. Jack Veal gets a solid header and the linesman is in the perfect yeah, he's really spot. really happy to, to step out, Bevan. This time slightly overruns it and has to slide tackle. It's lost to Moyes. A great pass from Alex Moyes into Jack Veal. He plays a great ball into the What a save from the goalkeeper. Frank Lovett caught it cleanly. Goalkeeper with a strong hand and even with the follow-up. Stepping out with the ball. Looking to try and engage an ex-City player and play a forward pass. It's made its way through to Pollock who hits it early off the crossbar. I think Jack Arthur got a slight touch on that. There it is again, Max Clark doing a really good job 1v1 and starting to come away with the ball. Sonny Cox trying to stay on side but it's been played in towards Frank Lovett around the back post. Roberts gets a little touch to take him away from goal but now he invites... Ellis Johnson forward, go 1v1 against the fullback, beats his man, stands it up at the back post with Jack Veal to head back across, and it's 3-1 to Exeter City. What a clever header Sorry, back across goal and in off the post, but Ellis Johnson 1v1 to beat his man and the cross that he puts into the back post. After the game, we caught up with under-18s coach Chad Gribble, who was delighted with the performance. Just really, really pleased for the lads. That, that That's a, a seriously good opponent we played tonight and uh, we, we knew we were going to have to be at our best in, in all parts of our game and it's probably the, the most complete performance of the season so far on a night where it counted so de delighted for the boys and I thought they, they thoroughly deserved the, the victory in the end. Uh, I think it was quite hard to just um, 
signal out an individual performance, but the team collectively, they, they put in a real shift, didn't they? Yeah, that they, they worked, that they ran, they competed. And tonight, unlike the, the previous two rounds, I thought we showed enough quality on the ball to, to create some chances and, and have some spells of possession ourselves against a team who, who we know are, are very, very good on the ball. So, um, yeah, again, d delighted with how complete that performance was. Uh, we'll go back to the start. Following your heart, in spirit, in soul, you make every tackle, score every goal. You're part of it, wherever you are in the world. From the first minute until the last kick. Victories, heartbreaks, you're part of the fabric, the passion, devotion, supercharging emotion. For you, there is only one. Abiding loyalty, togetherness that is second to none. Follow every kick, every tackle, every goal. With access to live stream games and match day commentary. With coverage spanning the globe. Behind the scene content, newsletters and match highlights. There's no better way for you to get closer to your club. And with I follow sales supporting them, no better way to show your love. When you can't be there, be there with I follow. It's time to get a fan view now. Here is City fan and season ticket holder Jensen, who is looking forward to be back on the big bank very soon. I guess one place to start really. And I mean, how excited are you at the prospect of being able to return to St James Park next week? Um, uh, I mean, I'm quite excited because it's been a long time. I want to say about nine months since I last went to watch a City game. Um, I don't know what to really say, to be honest. It's going to be quite weird because it's been a long time, as I said, but... Yeah, I mean, can't wait to be honest. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, uh, a long time. I mean, you, you're quite sort of vocal about your support of the club, especially on social media. I mean, just how much have you missed it over these past nine months? Um, oh, I miss it a lot, you know, because every game, I go to every single home and away game. Um, yeah, I miss it a lot. It's something that's been part of my life. You work all week and you see it on the weekends. Um, but not having that, it's, it's been quite strange. But like you said, yeah, to get back into it, it'd be, be brilliant, really. But yeah, I've missed it like mad, to be honest. It's, yeah, it's brilliant. What do you think your reaction will be on Tuesday night when you go through those turnstiles again for the first time? Um, I don't know. Like, you know, it'd be, it'd be brilliant, like I said. It'd be amazing just to come back on the big bank and actually just see it once again. Like, then it'd be quite surreal, wouldn't it? It's just been a long time coming. But, like, you know, amazing, hopefully, yeah. I mean, what is it you've missed the most? Is it, like you're saying, that, you know, it's that release at the end of the week and meeting up with friends and stuff like that? Yeah, it'll be, yeah, like you said, it's a release at the end of the week. It's something you look forward to. And the main thing I miss is meeting up with mates, um, you know, just watching the football, the atmosphere. A lot of it really is when it all comes together. There's no place like it really uh, on the weekends. But yeah, I miss a lot of it really. You've been really open as well with your um, like issues around mental, your mental health and your journey on that. I mean, has this played a big part in that as well over these last, you know, nice Yeah, years? yeah. Um, mental health, well, it's, it was a bit of a problem uh, over lockdown that because obviously that was a quite a good release at the end of the week with uh, football and that. But yeah, I struggled over, um, over the weeks and months when football wasn't around. It's nothing to have, nothing to connect to, but... You know, that's something that I can keep my eye on. I'm, I'm focused towards to uh, on Tuesday evening against Northampton. So, yeah, it's something I've missed a lot, obviously. But yeah, it was a massive struggle. I can't lie about that. I'm sure it was for many other people. So, so do you find going out there sort of helps helps you with that? Oh, oh, definitely. Yeah, uh, whether it's home or away, whatever the, the game is, how big or small, just every game, it's it's just exciting. It's something to look forward to. Like I said, it helps with my mental health and yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing like it really watching City, if I'm honest. And I see from your social media as well, you've been getting up to lots of long walks and things as well to sort of yeah. help help you. I mean, how's that been going? Yeah, it's going quite well. I haven't, I haven't done much recently, but um, yeah, it's I don't know where it came from really. I just, just thought, you know, I'll go for, go for a long walk. So I went from Exeter where I live, obviously, and I went all the way to Exmouth. 
And then I thought I'll go a bit further, start getting Timmouth, Sidmouth, and then started going and running. And obviously I've done five Ks, ten Ks. But yeah, I don't know where it's come from, but yeah, that's another thing that helps with mental health as well. It's it's brilliant. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. I mean, have you been watching the games on iFollow as well recently? Yeah, I've been watching um, as many as I can. Um, sometimes, obviously, it's like work or if I'm busy on the weekends. Um, but yeah, I've watched the majority of them. Obviously, the most recent one was Grimsby a couple of evenings ago, which you know, is brilliant. But yeah, it's not the same though, is it? When you, when you watch them on iFollow, you want to be there, don't you? But yeah, obviously, if that's the easiest way to support, then yeah, I've yeah, been watching them on iFollow. And one game I'm sure you'd have loved to get to would be Saturdays. I mean, it's second place, third at the Johnny Rock yeah. Stadium. It, was, it would have been set up for some atmosphere, wouldn't it? Yeah, I did Cheltenham a couple of years ago and it is one of the, the best away days, I'd say. I get loads of fans going, obviously, nearby. And uh, obviously loads of City fans usually go. But yeah, Cheltenham, it would have been an amazing game, you know, for the fans and for the game as well. So, um, what, I mean, what have you made of the season so far? We're... 15 games in and, you know, on the back of some really good form recently, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't too sure what to expect from this season, but to see us sat in third after 15 games and obviously some of the wins we've got, it, you know, it's amazing so far. I'm very happy and especially to see all the uh, the young players come from the academy, come through uh, into the first team. That's you know, something else like Joel Randall and Josh Key, etc. Yeah, it's brilliant, Please, really, to be honest, to see where we are. So. Is it nice to see a free scoring at <laughs> side as well this season? I mean, a lot of our games last year seemed to, to end up, you know, sort of the one nils and you know that kind of thing. But this year we're sort of banging them in, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, seeing us beat like six one, it's Colchester four one the other evening. Yeah, it makes it more convincing and less nerve wracking. So I've been to the few one nils last season. And it, it puts you on the edge pretty much all game, but. Yeah, it's been brilliant. I'd love to see uh, how Joel Randall has been as well. Just can't stop scoring. So, yeah, it's brilliant. We've just got to hope when fans return that those goals and moments don't dry up, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. You, you don't want to you know, drop them back to the one nils again, but three points is three points. But yeah, hopefully I'd like to see us still score in front of the fans, obviously. But, yeah. It's going to be great for everyone to see, you know, like you mentioned, you know, Josh and Joel and people like It's going to be great for the fans to see those guys in person and not on iFollow, isn't it? Oh, of course, yeah. You know, like get to see them finally because I don't think we've actually seen Josh Key that often uh, in the first team in real life. So it will be actually a relief to see the likes of him, uh, even Alex Partridge and a few others, you know, coming through. But yeah, it, it will be amazing to see our, our homegrown players come through and actually see them in real life rather than I follow. But yeah. I guess just to finish up, I'll have to ask you like I ask everyone, but I mean, how did you see Saturday going? Probably, probably you'd say it was our toughest game yeah. of the season, I'm, wouldn't you? I'm not too sure. Cheltenham are quite a solid side at home, a solid side overall. Um, I'm not the most positive person, but I'll say a solid one-all draw. I'll, I'll stick with a one-all draw. I'll take a draw all day long. I think we'd take that ahead of the game, wouldn't you, definitely? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Thanks for giving up your time and we look forward to seeing you back on Tuesday. No worries. Thanks a lot, Scott. That's it for today's episode of Parklife on the Road against Cheltenham Town. Of course, season ticket holders and the rest, you know the drill by now. There's plenty of time to pick up your match pass. Hopefully, it won't be for much longer. For those of you attending on Tuesday, I'll see you then. And until then, up the city!